Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about how to determine the calorific value of a fuel using a bomb calorie meter. Now first let me explain you what exactly is a calorific value. A calorific value is the amount of heat or the amount of energy a substance can produce or a fuel can produce when it is ignited or when it is set to combustion. If the calorific value is high that means the amount of energy that substance will produce is high. If the amount of energy is high then that means it is a desired fuel. The utility is more and also the quality. That means calorific value is the only measure by which we can actually find out the quality of a fuel and we can find out whether the fuel is a good fuel or a bad fuel according to the quality and utility wise. That is why it is extremely important to know the calorific value of the fuels. Let us see in this session how do we exactly find the calorific value by using a bomb calorie meter. Determination of calorific value by bomb calorie meter. This first line is the definition of it. Calorific value is the total amount of heat obtained on complete combustion of unit mass or unit weight of a substance. The heat liberated is of higher value when the products of combustion are cooled down to room temperature and such calorific value is then called as the gross calorific value. When the combustion of fuel is carried out openly, then the products of combustion will take away some heat and a lower amount of heat is obtained that is known as the net calorific value. Now there are two types of calorific values, the gross calorific value and the net calorific value. Now let us study what exactly is a bomb calorie meter. Bomb calorie meter is nothing but a device and due to that device we can actually find out what is the calorific value of the fuel. This apparatus that is high pressure oxygen bomb is used to find out the calorific value of solid and liquid non-volatile fuels. Let us see the construction of it. The determination assembly consists of a strong cylindrical bomb made up of stainless steel which is a corrosion resistant in which the combustion of fuels is made to take place. Now it is very important to understand that it is made up of stainless steel. Why? Because stainless steel is an alloy which will not get corroded. It has to be corrosion resistant. Now when I am talking about corrosion resistance, I am talking about substances which do not corrode. Why? Because exactly inside that bomb calorie meter, I am going to get many reactions which include fuels. Those are not reactions which are caused due to fuels. Those are the reactions which include fuels in it. And that is the reason why there can be a lot of gases, a lot of high temperature, but this calorimeter should sustain all of it. And that is the reason why it is made up of stainless steel and it is made up of substances which are not easily corrosible or which resist corrosion. The bond has lid which can be screwed to the body of the bond so to make a perfect gas tight seal. The lid is provided with two stainless steel electrodes and an oxygen inlet valve. To one of the electrodes, a small ring is attached. In this ring, a nickel or stainless steel crucible can be supported. Now, let me show the diagram of the bomb calorie meter. Now, this is the entire structure of my bomb calorie meter. And when I'm talking about this, this is the electrode to which a ring is attached to it. And this can support a small crucible. The bomb is placed in a copper calorie meter, which is surrounded by an air jacket and water jacket to prevent heat losses due to radiation. So, where I have two jackets, the air jacket and the water jacket. So, both of them will make sure that the heat inside the calorie meter will remain inside and there won't be a radiation of heat or transfer of heat from inside to outside or from outside to inside. That means optimum level of temperature is maintained inside the calorie meter. The calorie meter is provided with an electrically operated stirrer and Beckman's thermometer which can read temperature difference up to one hundredth of a degree accurately. That means the accuracy of the bomb calorie meter is extremely high. It reads about one hundredth of a degree. That means all the small parts are also taken into consideration. This bomb can resist pressure of at least 50 atmospheres. So over here this is exactly my bomb calorie meter. If you can see this entire thing is made up of stainless steel but inside over here I have a copper calorie meter. Now between the copper calorie meter and the stainless steel container I have two jackets. The inner one is air jacket, the outer one is water jacket. Now these both jackets will help in maintaining the temperatures inside and won't let radiation of heat of inside to outside or outside to inside. Over here I have an electrode to which a ring is attached and this exactly is nothing but my bomb. The bomb is made up of oxygen and therefore I have an oxygen valve over here. 
around 6 voltage battery. The Beckman's thermometer is attached over here directly and this thermometer has a reading of 100 of a degree. Electrodes to the wing is attached over here. We have the MG fuse wire, weight pallet of a given fuel and a sample. This is nothing but my bomb calorie meter. Let us see the working of it. A known mass of the given fuel is taken in a clean crucible. The crucible is then passed over the ring attached to the electrode. A fine magnesium wire touching the fuel sample is then stretched across the electrodes. This system acts as a fuse. The bomb lid is tightly screwed up at bomb filled with oxygen. It is always important to remember that my bomb calorie meter is entirely made up of oxygen and nothing else. It is actually known as oxygen bomb to 25 atmospheric pressure. Now the entire calorie meter can take up to 50 atmosphere but over here we are just putting 25 atmospheric pressure. The bomb is then lowered into copper calorie meter containing a known mass of water. The stirrer is worked and initial temperature of the water is noted. Now this temperature is being noted by the Batman's thermometer which is already inserted inside the bomb calorie meter. The electrodes are then connected to a 6 volt battery and the circuit is completed. The sample burns and the heat is liberated. Uniform stirring of water is continued and the maximum temperature attained is recorded. Now why do we need the uniform stirring? We need the stirring which is also an electrical stirring. That means it is not a human intervention happening over there. And because of this stirring the heat spreads uniformly. And since the heat spreads uniformly there is uniformity of the heat in the entire calorie meter. And that is the reason why the temperature will be recorded recorded will be of the optimum temperature of the uniformly spreaded heat. Now in this optimum temperature whatever is the highest recorded temperature will be my calorific value for that particular fuel which is placed inside the bomb calorie meter. So here we studied what exactly a bomb calorie meter is the construction and the working of it and how do we calculate the calorific value of any fuel by using a bomb calorie meter. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.